This is a very friendly like copy too with all the power outage tonight. So thank you for coming out. Thank you for being responsive to the it's on, it's on, it's on, it's on, it's on. <laughs> so hopefully we have a short uh, meeting, get everybody back to the dark homes. Uh, we give my welcome everybody to our October meeting. I'm John David, the chair for 2019. John Rasser, Vice Chair of Everything on Conversation, and Tim White, the Vice Chair. So uh, we begin tonight by uh, calling the meeting to order, and then we move on to the adoption of our uh, agenda. So if there's no objection up here at the table, as presented, then we'll proceed. Um, at the beginning of every meeting, we offer an opportunity for public comment for things that are not on the agenda. If there's something here tonight that you want to question, a statement, concern, you have an answer for, that's great. We'll do it at the time that we do that item on the agenda. But if you have something that's not on the agenda, we have a microphone right here, and we'd love to hear from you. So, I'm here to speak to you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think we have to sell houses. Go somewhere else. Okay. Um, with that, we'll jump right ahead, and we'll hear from uh, Supervisor John Heidel, the Supervisor Communications.
It's all going to go away. It's going to take several years probably to, to correct some of these things. But what are the potential solutions? Legislation is certainly one, but what kind of legislation do you need? Looking at the insurance commission, who's an appointed body that is supposed to be it's representatives from uh, elected officials, etc., who are supposed to be representing the rural counties and looking at what's going on and helping with that. So there's several different avenues to pursue. The unfortunate part, like the PG&E, PSBS, the county can really do nothing other than try to influence. And there's people really upset because they think the county ought to be you know, fixing all the problems. And, we don't have the authority, we don't have the ability to do that. It's really got to start at the state level in this case, and some things actually have to go to the federal level. So we do our best and, uh, and try to help where we can, but the influencing part is what we're trying to focus on. How do we influence legislation and other things that hopefully help correct some of these things over time? I think it's been recognized it's not only not being able to get insurance, but it affects the whole economy. <coughs> From the standpoint of people can't sell their homes because the new buyer can't get insurance, or if the insurance premiums go way up because you have to go with an alternate carrier, you have to go with a fair plan, then there's a lot of people that basically get priced out of that market. And if they own their home, they don't have to have insurance. If you have a mortgage, you have to have insurance. So you're either forced to pay if you have a mortgage, or if you own the property, you don't have to be insured. But then you're at full risk of everything that you've got invested your livelihood, your retirement, whatever it is. So it really is a tough situation for a lot of people, and it needs to be corrected. But, but the, the solution set is not real obvious at this point. There's a lot of things we can try, but I'm not sure any of them will be real successful. So I'll leave you with those two sad notes. Um, <laughs> I wish there was some really happy notes. Go ahead. I had one question. We had an email today when I had service when I was going to the town center about um, uh, a special ordinance or a vote on an ordinance at the board is that next week for a, I thought it was a transportation plan. I might have read it wrong. Transportation. Uh, the transportation uh, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, we received a notice in the mail to that effect. That's what probably what prompted the inquiry. Uh, I received it. It said that there was a special uh for a special a public vote. hearing. Okay. And there's one uh, adopting two resolutions modifying environmental management fees as well. So. Well, there's a postcard that went out relative to the cemetery. Yeah, I had that. Special district. But the one just hit about okay. 3.30 this afternoon is when I got it. All right. So I, I haven't kept up with my email or anything else because I've yeah, yeah. fixed the <coughs> generator. So. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so that's, that's it. Unless there's questions, I think Steve said, have something over here. John, I've said this before. You've already heard this. But, you know, we have a problem not with PG&E the light the fire. We have a problem with the feds, the state, and the county building the fire. We have catastrophic density in our forests, yeah. state and feds, and the, the county's obviously got to deal with this property too. What we re really, what we should be doing is writing as many letters to whoever will listen to us at the state and at the feds to tell them get out here and get this fixed. Yeah, but it's more than just listening to us. It's getting something done from a. Uh, legislating change, and that's oh, where yeah. the challenge comes on. So a lot of these things are tough to get. There's not a lot of bipartisan support for anything, and they seem to be really alienating one another on almost every issue. Even the stuff that should be simple to understand. Be bipartisanship anymore. Yeah. So it, it, that's the political arena. But yeah, Tim. John, I, I probably won't make it to the Kylie's meeting, but one suggestion, if you're going to be there, yeah. is just it's a matter of fairness. Uh, insurance companies typically can give you notice of 60 days, and then you're in immediate scramble to find I've been told it's 45. 45, okay. okay. But maybe either by insurance of the commission or by legislation, <coughs> minimum of 120 days. Because, you know, insurance company, 120 days, it's easy for them to do, it's computer generated, it's whatever uh, algorithms they use to determine if they're gonna cancel. But right. that allows a homeowner uh, okay, okay, I got 120 days, not just 45 days, to find an alternative insurance company. So it's very simple. It shouldn't be controversial. It's not partisan at all. It's simply a matter of fairness to home. It gives them additional time to find replacement insurance. I totally agree. In fact, when uh, Ricardo Lara came to Colorado County and he spoke with Brian Deerkamp and I, because we were representing the Board of Supervisors, on his plan for legislative changes was 180 day plus the 45 days. So clearly okay. six months plus 45 days is a notification. What he told us is he can't force that to happen. It's gotta go through legislative change. And there has been some legislature, I guess it's been written, but it 
hasn't gotten off the ground. So I don't know why. Um, but again, it's one of those things that just, it, it's a quandary as to why these simple things that seem so simple are not simple, but they're not. Yeah. You know, John, in, uh, in other parts of the country, the federal government does uh, take care of or support insurance for areas that are uh, assigned risk, like the beachfront property, uh, for example, on Long Island for a long time. Uh, the federal government pay, uh, took care of the insurance or paid for part of the insurance or put them in assigned risk. Now, uh, are we looking at that kind of a thing, some kind of aid from the federal government? There may be, there may be money out there. Uh, for the relationship between the state of California and the federal government, I doubt it. We might be looking for it, but I doubt it would yield anything. I mean, we're not the most compatible at this point in terms of trying to assist one another, right? So, okay. but there's lawsuits and all kinds of things. And, and just one other thing, uh, is the sheriff uh, putting more people on to go through these neighborhoods that are dark at night? Uh, during I'm sure the sheriff is, is not bringing any people on other than to do some kind of overtime type of screening, but I mean, he has a limited resource. He's understaffed by 15 deputy sheriffs right now. So he doesn't have a resource to bring extra people on. Um, because this is the time when you need extra, you, you realize that you mentioned that with the garage, this is also the time, and I used to uh, see that back in New York when we would lose lights for a week or so. Uh, you know, that's the time when people start to do things when they shouldn't be doing. Yeah, well, one of the things you can do with your garage, which I'm going to do tonight when I get home, is relatch it. So you can't lift it from the outside. Once you've unlatched it, you know, you move it up and down and stuff without the motor. But you want to relatch it, make sure the garage is secure. And if you want to avoid all the hassle, <coughs> Um, the edge of the work, leave your vehicle outside, make sure it's locked. You know, but even there, uh, Sue, Sue uh, Novacell told us that she had her husband's car broken into the other day. And it was a big guy, probably weighed about 350 pounds. It's called a bear. It broke through the window because they are so hungry up there, but you know, he was looking for any morsel of food or anything else. Didn't totally destroy the car. But uh, it was significant damage, so they have bear problems. We don't, we just don't have bear problems. <laughs> just pull the plug on the garage. <clears throat> yeah, there, there's a lot of things, but, but be cautious is what we're trying to say. Safeguard yourself as much as you can. Be smart about it because uh, everybody's looking to take advantage when these things happen. So, anything else? Uh, the only other thing I can chime in is that yeah. uh, PG&E has uh, the, the resource center set up at Rolling Hills Yes. Sir. Yep. So if you need power, you can put a charger phone. Uh, um, it's available over there. Oh, uh, from from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Where, excuse me, where was the that? The Rolling Hills Church. Oh, yeah, it's on the White Rock Road. I'm, I'm pointing at it, right? Like you can see. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Michelle's here to talk about the uh, Vineyards Del Road Hills project, and we've talked about this uh, a couple times before, and they had a presentation uh, where the draft EIR came out, and she's here to update us about where they're at with the project. And did you move somewhere there? Forward. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Appreciate the opportunity to be back here tonight. We have been here. Gosh, over the years, five or six times. We, I started on this project in 2013. So we're about six years in, probably about six and a half by the time we're uh, hopefully through it. But not, not a short process, but hopefully taking that time has been helpful. We've had a lot of interaction uh, with our neighbors and with the community um, and with the various agencies in the county. Uh, so, as way of background, if you're not familiar, this area of land, in fact, let me put this side up first. This piece of land right now was Salmon Falls Road, um, and Malcolm Dixon is kind of the bilateral there where it splits. Was previously approved, is still currently previously approved, is 141 acres, I'm sorry, 114 acres. It was simply bifurcated, as you can see, with not a lot of great care in terms of how they did that and how they planned that. Is there a on this? Oh, the middle of the way. 
So this area up here, and you'll see in a, a later slide, is very um, heavily wooded. It's got a very beautiful oak tree canopy right up here. Um, there's a man-made pond, there's a couple wetlands, there's an old schoolhouse and an old barn as well. This current plan doesn't take those assets into account. It, it literally just sort of bifurcates the lots into five acre sites. <coughs> So again, 114 acres, it was approved with uh, 19 five-acre units. Uh, and as I mentioned, the amenities it includes was the old schoolhouse, the barn, um, the pond, some vernal pools, wetlands, and then the oak woodlands. So the new proposed project, and, and again, this is where all the oak woodlands are, we look to preserve uh, all of those. These red sort of hashed lines are the vineyards. They would be not aerial sprayed, but um, hand sprayed. We've talked to uh, the agricultural commissioner um, as well as some soil experts to understand what would be good. It's it's not uh, big enough, obviously, to do any kind of mass production. It would be more amenitizing the project, providing a buffer um, to the street and beautification. Uh, there are one acre lots here, no large, there are some that are a little bit larger, but no smaller than one acre lots. Uh, 65 acres of open space, as you can see, would be um, preserved there. It is surrounded, and I put some maps if you haven't gotten one on the back to show this, um, but to the north you've got La Pinata and Alto that are big projects um, at similar densities. Uh, this right here is um, Wilson Estates, it's now the Overlook. Yeah. <clears throat> and then there's uh, Ulta Vista, and we've got um, five acre lots here. So with the one acre, we were hoping that would be a nice feathering. Um, I don't, and John, you might remember, Overlook is, is much more dense, but I'm not sure the density on it. But I know it's not one acre. It was 20 half or 20, 126 lots, I think, on the acreage. Yeah, they're the half acre. I think they're half to one acre because they're supposed to be one acre piece, so I put the roads in and stuff, it's, yeah, it's roughly half to one acre. Um, so our hope is that we would not only retain the amenities here, but also we'd be adding in some uh, trails and some connection points. Uh, we are consistent with the general plan. Um, what we would be looking for this is a density bonus. We did do a full uh, environmental impact report on the project. Um, and so we were able to see it, it looked at noise, air quality, traffic, cultural resources. Some of our initial feedback we received was on the street width. This was uh, from neighbors and from the fire department. So we increased the street width. It is consistent with surrounding projects. Um, the access to Malcolm Dixon, go back to this DMRT. You can see here, this is where it kind of came down initially, and you were able to make a turn right or left. We had received a fair amount of feedback that that wasn't a great exit point, and that they actually didn't, didn't love the idea of having people go turn right onto Malcolm Dixon. So this new map, so this was the old uh, exit, this is <laughs> the new, and it will have a restriction on that turning movement. <clears throat> the hope is to get folks out here onto um, where there's going to be uh, access to Green Valley Road and more capacity. Um, additional neighborhood turnarounds that we heard were important. Again, that those are these. So there's uh, you know an opportunity. We actually looked at cul-de-sacs to get great feedback on that. So turnarounds. Um, we are keeping the old schoolhouse. Uh, initially we had thought this could be a great opportunity to incorporate it into the HOA, um, bolster it up and the HOA could utilize it for events or meetings. Um, we heard very loud and clear they did not. Neighbors did not want that. They were concerned that would, they would rent it out and that could then in turn bring um, more events, traffic, and noise. Uh, so we are going to, if, if you've driven by there, it is, frankly, it's amazing it's still standing. <laughs> it, it does need some work. It's not going to be brought up to an ADA type of compliance. Um, but we'll do what we can to get in there and bolster it so it's falling down either. Uh, the pond, 
wetlands, those will all remain. So this project does not propose public sewer. I know Steve will likely have a comment on that. Uh, initially, what we heard as part of the notice of uh, preparation and the NOP process was because this is not in a community region boundary, and to be respectful of the notion that sewer, public sewer, uh, could be an indicator of future growth or could encourage future growth. Uh, and because we're one acre lots, um, we adhered to that and, and kept it as uh, septic. Now, we then, when the draft EIR went out, we actually ended up getting comments to the contrary saying, hey, you actually should consider public sewer. So we did retain a firm to analyze whether or not that was even feasible. Uh, it is feasible, and this was, I would say, probably a 10,000 overlook on the feasibility of it. They would need to go in uh, and really determine what that looked like and what that cost would be. Because it wasn't considered as part of the environmental impact report, we are still not proposing it, but we've kept the door open that if, if the board at some point wants to say, you know, we'd really like you, Denver, to, to do that further analysis to take it to the next step, um, that we'd be willing to do that. Um, it just, from a CEQA perspective, and I apologize, our technical folks aren't here, that it was not something we could do without starting that approach. <clears throat> so again, we tried to have kind of an in-between where we did a little bit of the analysis. We know that it is technically feasible. Uh, the financial could be a different side that could make it infeasible. Uh, but if that's something the county wanted us to further explore, we could. Um, but we also heard on Alta Vista Court, which uh, is over here, that they had just dug up the lines. And so the idea that there could be water pulled into there and, and to redig them really didn't make any sense. So we changed that verbiage that they wouldn't be going through at that area. And again, we changed the language. We're not prohibiting events. If the HOA at some point wants to spend the resources to get the um, old school house into a position that they can do things, that would be up to them. Uh, but we would not be doing that as part of the project. And from a schedule standpoint, as I mentioned, I came on in 2013. Um, we did some initial studies to see if what we were even looking at was feasible. Filed the application in 2014. Um, our first presentation here was a few years ago. Um, we ended up doing a 90-day, uh, or I'm sorry, EIR public comment period. We heard that statutory requirement is 30 days. We heard that that really wasn't long enough. Um, so we extended it to allow folks to be able to get their comments in. Um, we, in fact, fall 2019, we're looking at, we've heard that we are now, well, I've heard that we are confirmed on October 24th. Um, I've not. It was in the notice today, right? Yeah, that is correct. Uh, you're on the, uh, uh, the agenda the agenda for the commission on the 24th. Uh, as part of that, the uh, final documentation is now publicly available. Uh -huh. The Unfortunately, um, you know, the final EIR, which I think is Exhibit D, is 202 pages. Uh, I, I also tried to quickly look at it today, but all I have is my phone, and I can't read those documents on the phone. Um, there's 28 pages of mitigation measures, um, but again, it's on the phone. I can't read it. It's so tiny. Um, so I don't think anyone has had a chance to read the documents. Oh, I didn't even know it was Bill. Oh, okay. <laughs> so but no one's had a chance to read the documents. Um, like I said, there's 28 pages of mitigation measures in addition to the 202 plus the staff recommendations. So you probably so that's the challenge when you do the full pages. EIR. You get what? A, when you do a full EIR, yeah. good and bad, you get to really dive into all the technical details yeah. and the various um, yeah. you know, issue areas. Probably the challenge is it's a, it's a huge document. It's a huge document, and um, again, it's, it's coming to the board two weeks from tomorrow, or the planning. Uh, commission to have their things. I, I mean, to tell you one um, condition that we've self-imposed is we heard a lot of comments, you can't see it on this map, about the concerns on from the Sterling Shire community on Lockway. Yeah. And so our our mitigation um, 
that would be required would be at the 11th building permit, and so there's 42 units. Um, what we have said is that that would be done in the first phase, because we've been meeting with Sterling Shire over the years. Their concern isn't necessarily us, but that, well, what if you only build 10? And then we never get it. So what we've said is within the first um, phase that that will get done. Yeah, it's like it's one of, I did, I did, I, there's 75 conditions of approval or something, and one of the conditions of approval is that on the other issuance of the 11th building permit, that you will make a two way left turn lockway uh, starting shot. So, and, and if you, um, I'll have to look at what they posted. We actually, when we wrote the conditions, we changed that language to say at the first phase. So I'll, I'll double check that. Right, right now, it says at the, upon the issuance of the 11th, again, I haven't seen, haven't read, if you're talking about phasing it, they're, they're saying the 11th uh, right. permit. There's I'll look at it as well. I can say, technically, that's, that's absolutely true. So I don't know if what they did was say, here's technically what they need to do, and maybe there's a separate area where, and this is what they're choosing to do. So I'll look, I didn't know it was online, but I'll take a look at it as well. <laughs> Something happens up on the ninth building permit, uh, some sort of no left turn on the Green Valley. So on, on Green Valley, um, I should have a larger scale. Uh, on the two cut off. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, it's actually Char Char Road cut off, so it's right here. Well, on the other one, not the uh, new road. Uh, uh, not going to be cut off, is it not? Gonna be cut off, no, it, but this is on Char Char Road. Is that where the outlet comes out? What do you value? No, no, no. This is on Green Valley Road. Yeah, we go, I know what you're talking about because it's been a, a, a big discussion we've been having with DOT. And in fact, we just um, finalized uh, mitigation language last week on that. And that was to say, we, we were initially, based on the traffic analysis that Rick Lula was done, we were restricting the turning movement. And we heard pretty loud and clear uh, DOT did not want us doing that. And so we were kind of in between a rock and a hard place and that this is what our environmentalists is telling us we have to do. But we hear you don't want that. So we worked with Raphael and um, Dave Spiegelberg and also Dave Livingston, the county council, to find the language uh, that they've all now agreed on that says we are going to do an engineer's report and pre-fund a future condition. So that actually won't be restricted, but what we're going to do is put money in, into an account that says when or if it's needed, that uh, the county now has that money sitting there to do that. And they were comfortable doing that. So that money would get put in immediately. And then, it, because it's, it's not triggered with this project, and it's not triggered at cumulative, it, it's triggered in a post-24 which they need to look at, but, um, but there is, and that assumes a variation of um, Dixon, not necessarily what they propose, but it assumes what the county has in their general plan. And so if we have to, we're, we're required to, to take a look at what the county plans on their land use and take that into as potential future projects and impacts. Can so, you, um, <coughs> Michelle, can you? I, I know APAC made about eight or nine pages of comments uh, uh, to the draft EIR. Uh, again, not having had a chance to get into 200 pages to read what the county responses were. Have you had a chance to see the county responses to those specific issues? I think a lot of it had to do, and John, you were on the subcommittee here, but a lot of it had to do with the the drainage and septic together with. So the, 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 um, what was that? Was it a uh, whole river? Uh, or are you talking about the one of the old, or the, or the septic? Oh, no, there, there were some units, units the septics were oh. above the creek or something, and there was concern that the, they, leaching, they weren't, the leaching fields were not big enough to prevent it from getting into the creek. Yeah, so can I creek. maybe offer, because I'm not a technical, and I apologize. Um, I What I can do, though, is get an actual, just a response to your letter, as to do a match matchup of what's in the final EIR, Specific to the APAC letter. Well, I can do that, but it's just when I have yeah, to get hold of it and read it, it's just that with, it's, it only came out three hours ago. You're here. Yeah. Uh, 
I know we were asking for a recommendation for APAC, but it's kind of hard for us to give a recommendation when we haven't read the final. Sure. Files. I didn't even know it was out, so you actually okay. know more than I do on that. I, I emailed, but I, it sounds like maybe staff wasn't in here today, um, which is probably why I didn't get a response back. But um, I'm happy to hear it's there. I, I just didn't know that. Okay. So you know, no, we're not looking for a recommendation. I think it was just an update. We've been communicating, kind of trying to figure out what the timing was. Um, and staff, you know, the county has been really busy, and so, you know, they just got a lot of them played, I think. You know, and this is sort of a general statement, probably more for Supervisor Heinold's years than years, but we see the county going back to the way they did business, and they were trying to, uh, we started that when you have a big project that does require a final EIR, they've gone back to this, okay, you get 30 to 45 days to make public comments on draft EIR, and then the final one, all they do is give two weeks notice. It's when it's all the documents are posted on the county website, and then it's automatically scheduled for a planning commission hearing for two weeks. I'm not asking for you to, for additional time, or to delay your hearing, because as you said, this project's gone on, it's been looked at I've had two many times since we started. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right so I'm not asking for additional time on this project, but if the same thing, uh, county continues this policy, and it looks like they are on some other big projects that are coming down the pipe, uh, it's just not the right way uh, to tick off the people of our community if you don't give them enough time to do a thoughtful <laughs> review of the documents. And two weeks, uh, to read them, to have a discussion with the APAC board members and with the, and the community is really just not sufficient time. And then the community sometimes gets the feeling, well, it's just been sort of jammed down to complete the process and you're not having a chance for the community to uh, make final comments before the planning commission or the board makes their final recommendations or approval. I hear you. I can tell you we've done in, in, I mean, an incredible amount of outreach to the community. Yes. You know, I've walked door to door to the folks. I mean, there's there's nothing up here. It's approved, but there's nothing here. You know, on the side, in an overlook that are there, and in the Arroyo Vista area. We've been at the Sterling Shire HOA. I've got to three um, yeah. HOA chairs. <laughs> no, I think in all honesty, I think so we've been have, really trying to be community. You have done more, more than most development projects that we've seen here at APAC in terms yes. of engaging the community, uh, coming to APAC, we've been here, as you said, three or four times on this project alone. Uh, you certainly, when we requested the delay, you know, we asked for 60, you gave us 90 days to make, you know, most developers don't do that. So you've more, gone more and above the, what I said that any other development that I've seen in the four yeah. or five years. I don't disagree. I mean, candidly, I, I don't know if you got a notice that it was out. I didn't even know. So I, it would be helpful for us to take a look at it as well. So I think it's good feedback. And to be fair, I think for several times we've talked about this in the last few years, you, in the beginning, uh, when the draft year came out, we talked about maybe late spring, summer for the final, and then as we got into that, that next 90 days, you think, well, it might be, you know, late summer, early right. fall, and so now we're fully into fall, and here it comes. Yeah, yeah. I, have, I, have, I have a question. Yeah, I want to comment on that. I remember uh, when this was brought up before that there was a great deal of questioning about not having public sewers, and you still don't seem to have uh, really resolved that. You said you're going to look at it, do a study about it. We got three comments on it, so I wouldn't say a great deal. I mean, well, at this meeting, there was a great deal of comments comment on it. Yes. There were three, and I can name all three people. We, we did. We, we spent another $20,000, did an analysis on it. And what came back was essentially we it was not analyzed in the EIR, and I will say it wasn't analyzed because the feedback we got at the notice of preparation was that people did not want it, and we had far more comments on that that it is not in a community region boundary, and that this is a rural area, and they wanted to keep it that way, and they felt that bringing uh, public water would diminish that and would potentially then cause other areas to grow more than they felt they should. Um, as I've said, I don't. I can tell you this owner is, is not opposed to it. It was surprising actually to get those comments because they were so different than what we had heard. 
which is why we did that that exercise to get that information. And what we proposed to the county, and I have not read what what came out, was that we sort of opened the door that if if they want to go that path, um, they could do that, you know, for sure after the fact. So I'd like to comment. I've talked with our planning department several times about the situation and trying to impress upon them that there needs to be more time to review. The one thing I'll, th I'll tell you that I think is an exception that I think they finally heard was that it's a central Elroy Hill specific plan where they broke the planning commission meeting into two parts and you have until the second meeting, which is, as you know, is December 12th. The information is supposed to come out October 14th. So basically it's a 60 day type of window, but it's also during that holiday, get you know, Thanksgiving and get ready for the Christmas period, which is never good. So I'm continuing to try to influence how they schedule these things. And I don't know what drives them to try to, a two week response is not enough, totally agree. Uh, just to update the Senator Albert Hill, I've been going back and forth with Formel, uh, Paul Lugimus, who's a, a senior planner, or management planner of the uh, planning department. Uh, those documents will not be available Monday, October 14th, as we had heard. They are, uh, they are going for, let's see, they're being finalized for <coughs> clerical processing early next week. Okay. So we probably won't see them until uh, the 20th or the end of next week or the following week which again throws off the amount of time. And again, Central Elroy Hills, I mean, 202 pages for your final environment, Central Elroy Hills specific plan, that's gonna be 600, 800 pages. Yeah. Uh, again, that was three and a half years since comments have been made. You know, I know it's, I'm somewhat familiar with it because having read it the first time and made a lot of comments on it, but at the same time, that's three years ago. I gotta refresh my memory a little bit. Right. And you know, as you get older, you know, it takes a little longer to do that. <laughs> Not for you, Jim. But oh, I'm yeah, no. I, will, I will talk to him again and see if we can't get some consideration. I just don't understand why it takes so long to get the stuff out there. But uh, I don't live there. For, I'll forward you the email. Okay, thank you. Well, I do think, I, I think, um, I mean, I think they're a little understaffed. And so I know that recently um, they're starting to use some outside planning groups to kind of build a little bit of right. bandwidth and capacity. I, I don't know the issue with Central or with ours. We, yeah submitted all of our comments um, initially in April. We met in July. In August, we had all the final, August 19th. So um, we get just as frustrated. So I, I hear what you're saying. And I haven't seen it. Either. And again, it's nothing against your project or yeah, anything. It's just that the it takes time to look at these things. Um, once it's approved, and it, you know, it's, it's approved. It, you can't sort of undo. Once the ground is broken, it starts. You know, does it really hurt the developer uh, if it, it gets approved two weeks later? You know, so it's not. It's a month or it's six weeks. It really isn't. They still have to get their financing. They still the economy has to be in the right situation where they feel they're going to be able to sell what they build. So you know, again, it's a public perception that if you're rushing it through. The public is somehow being denied an opportunity to review and make final comments. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think what's interesting is, especially for what I do, I think it's more the communication side of it, that on our end is more frustrating. That we would have been fine on the 14th. We have been given so many planning commission dates, which is why I came in here saying that. I yeah. think. Um, so when you say what's two weeks, it's not. It's not going to make or break anything. But when they're be being given different dates for a year, it just becomes a real frustration. Um, but I hear what you're saying. And uh, I'm happy. There's not another meeting before then. But I mean, I'm happy to meet one-on-one. -on -one. I'm happy to come back. With, you know, the group that wrote the letter. I also, to make it easier, if we want to just do a response to that letter, I'm happy to work on that as well. So. Uh, whatever we can do to get there, I will also download it tonight and take a look. Um, because like the walkway improvement, I hope it's in there. Because I was certainly sure last week they specifically told us this is what we were it, doing. It, it, it's definitely in here. It doesn't talk about phase one, but it does talk about the other. But I have them phase one, and so I need to see that. Okay. So Maybe they define phase one as being, you know, the first 11 or 12 or something like that. But no, no, we were, well, at least I was very clear with Sterling Shire that we wouldn't do that, that it would be in the first phase that the house is built. Mm -hmm. So not within an end, not 
essentially is they're doing their improvement plans that work with start because that was a that was a really big concern for them mm -hmm. and i know they want to see that get done frankly before any construction starts it's a safety issue sure which is the right way to do it if you have the resources to make it happen so yeah we just need to get the dot and other people on board with that concept it takes a while mm -hmm. Can I answer any other questions? My contact information uh, that hopefully everybody has. But like I said, I'm, we certainly were trying to rush this. Um, but, but I'm happy to come out here you know, this week, next week, the following week, and meet with folks. Um, or if once you've had an opportunity to take a look at it, you know, I don't know how long it takes to go from planning commission to the board, so that will provide another opportunity, you know, before that happens. I don't even know if the planning commission approved it, and unless someone objects to it, I don't know if this project requires board approval. Yes, we time. are, yes, we are taking it. Oh, you are brought up. They have to certify the final. Final, okay. Yeah. All, right. All right. So no, maybe in December? I, I'm not sure what that time, so I should yeah. update out there. Well, that 24th planning commission hearing is chock full of wholesome good. There's a lot of projects in that one. Well, so, what else is on there? Central. There, uh, uh, no. Central is on Which one are you talking about? The 24th? No, no, no. Uh, that's so part of it. No, no. Um, Central J7. Uh, I got sideways. J7. There's something else. What else? Ridge, 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 so there's a, there's a bunch of There's them. five major projects on the yeah. one. You're, so, you're last, last, by the way, so you're oh, probably going to be there. Well, you're, you're listed last, but uh, is it always the right order? Usually, yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe some will ask for it to do this. Same thing you're doing. I saw. I'll go ahead and check that out. Okay. Thank you again for the opportunity. My information's up here. I'll also leave some cards on the back table. That's all. Thank you. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for the uh, the soap opera. Is it on? Is it off? <laughs> so I'm gonna try to find this in your question. There we go. Okay. Um, so we have two items on for the rest of the night. Okay. Yeah, you're pretty early. Uh, basically, these use notifications to advise residents of well, what's coming up. Um, and um, on this particular one. Um, there's a pre-application for a counter west for a mixed-use component to be added to the plan development there, and that's where the new, next to Blue Shield, where the new Oakmont uh, assisted living uh, project was built. Oakmont purchased all that property, and uh, they're looking to do something uh, take over there. But it's a mixed-use, wasn't defined in 1995 in the plan, in the PD, the plan development, when it was approved. But mixed use was added to the general plan in 2004 as something the county as a goal for the general plan. So we'll go through this. Now, uh, this was a, pre uh, a conceptual presentation to the Board of Supervisors, the J6 presentation, just to get some feedback from the board and say, hey, what do you think? Are we on the right track? They have not submitted a formal application yet. So, very quickly, um, they want to add mixed use, commercial, and age restricted apartment rentals. To the uh, 89 specific El Dorado specific plan, more specifically the plan development for uh, Town Center West. As you look at here, Blue Shield's over here, Target on that side, and the movie theater back here. You see, there's La Trobe, and there's uh, Town Center. Uh, and you know, you can't go through right now to a closed road. The Oakmont project they just developed is right down here. They did come back and buy all this property. So uh, it does require a specific plan amendment. Um, for the for uh, the El Dorado specific plan, um, so the J six is uh, I think the, the language was funny in, at the board, but uh, the general plan amendment initiation process. But this one was actually a specific plan. Um, so initiation hearing before the board, the hearings for determination of compliance with the, uh, the criteria of the of the, of the board's J six policy. Uh, no entitlements or approval. Nothing's approved from that meeting they just had. It's a discussion only for hey, this is what we're thinking and getting some feedback from the board to see if it's something feasible to proceed. Um, we'll go through all this, let us sort of jump ahead. Uh, but they did, they want to provide a transitional housing option for surrounding age restricted housing development in the immediate vicinity. And we are faced with sort of a, there's a ton of uh, age restricted and, and senior development, specifically south of the freeway. But uh, most of those, you have to buy a home. You're looking at, you know, I don't think they're thinking less than four or five hundred thousand dollars, more like six hundred thousand dollars. 
And so if somebody, uh, they were citing in their presentation, you know, somebody who's retired and doesn't want to own a home anymore, they want to be able to travel, and they're looking at age restricted. And with this project, they're envisioning, conceptually they're talking about having different uh, stages of accommodating seniors. Uh, you know, whether they need assisted living, whether they need just, you know, some, some other assistance, but it's just different phases they talked about. Um, so it would also can include a mix of commercial development and um, so 20 residential units per acre for talking about the density. And so I know we had talked about a couple years ago about the uh, town center apartments, you know, the county's general plan sites 24 multifamily, it's the dwelling units per acre. And uh, so this is underneath that standard. Uh, it's 116 acres. Um, so it does require a specific plan amendment uh, to allow that uh, mixed use development. And I know that they're thinking that primarily it's just a change of adding a few words to that plan development to allow for mixed use. But they are willing to actually do a lot of environmental impact. I think I said they did the full EIR. I know that we talked about before they talked about looking at the traffic specifically, but now they're committed to really studying the impacts. Um, right now, um, it does allow for, it's primarily a commercial light industrial uh, use over there, the Blue Shield office and uh, the old uh, CD jewel case plant that uh, is being converted to uh, storage, self-storage. So this would allow for something a little different, uh, more residential options for renting, uh, specifically for seniors, and it would, um, they're saying that the, uh, their initial look at it, it would be less traffic than what it's already approved for, but it doubles in the details. The map of the area and they just sort of highlighted some of the areas they were talking about just for this light orange area over here being more of a buffer a little less dense to shield against the uh, folks over here the stonebriar area and then they um they talked about a hotel conference center as well and that would be up more up here by blue shield and then uh, on this end down here would be more in the commercial use where they might have doctor's offices different things uh, and they would ideally they would want to tailor it to that senior population to have those services close by. The idea is for it to be a walkable community, bicycle community. I know that there was some discussion at the board hearing um, about this being in close proximity to the town center east on the other side of Latrobe. And it was brought up as a point that it's not really walkable since you've got to cross ten minutes of traffic. So but they would offer a shuttle service internally. That's typically something they do with a lot of the residential age restricted communities. So um, but it's something slow that needs to be studied. So if they Decide to proceed, we'll be looking at it. These are some, some conceptual looks of what they talked about uh, for the commercial aspect of what it would look like. They wanted to, to mirror closely with Town Center East or closer, um, you know, styles have changed since uh, 1995. But um, this is just a couple of looks at what they're talking about. And then for the residences, this is a couple of just sample conceptual looks at a two and a three story uh, building. And when they looked at it, they um, wanted to preserve. All the setbacks that are in place right now for that industrial sort of component that's already approved, uh, for residential, the setbacks are less. The, the standards for the county the ordinances, they're going to preserve what's already there and they're not going to ask for that residential setbacks. They're going to honor what was already committed to and uh, providing enough buffer for the residents on the other side. So um, right now it's you know, they seem, they've invested a lot of time in doing this. We've talked to them a few times. They're very eager to proceed. You know, they thought they had had a, a hotel uh, operator ready to go. I guess, you know, it just wasn't ready. And it wasn't ready for counting yet. So I would expect that we'll, uh, they have pretty good feedback at the board. They seem pretty receptive. I know there's a question of if the senior, the age-restricted component uh, doesn't pan out, is there an opportunity later to remove that age-restricted, to make this, the rentals. So, um, but that'll be something that'll come up when they actually submit a, a, an official, <coughs> official project. So, yeah. Steve has a question. John, one of my concerns there is they've got residents who are going to want to go across White Rock Road, maybe go to Rolling Hills Church or whatever else was developed on the other side. I would suggest that people start thinking right now that they could build a tunnel underneath White Rock Road. It's not hard to do. They should have built one under, underneath the Trove Road years ago because people who ride bikes and all that could have gotten under there without ever dealing with the traffic. Yeah. And we need to plan those things in advance. If, 
four. Yeah. You can't tell them when they're getting ready to build it. And he, by the way, needed time. Exactly. Um, but that all falls under the JPA, which will be building a four lane road from the county line all the way to Silver Valley. So, uh, and they anticipate putting a traffic light uh, across the main exit going into the church. So people theoretically uh, could trigger the traffic light and walk across. You know, that was a comment at the board. Is uh, I think Chris had made that comment was that with those pedestrian crossings, you have one person putting a button, pushing a button, and stopping ten lanes of traffic. Yeah, and and they don't like walk right by them. Two minutes later, does the same thing. Uh, and he, his belief was that he needed, uh, you know, not a, a, a great crossing, but he needed something to accommodate that. If there really was going to be a build out of more residences over there. Well, uh, Rolling Hills Church has a tremendous uh, a population on a Sunday. Yes, I do. And when they come out with all their cars, if you have a traffic light there, uh, the JPA is not going to appreciate uh, all the slowdown. You know, they, yeah. their only concern is to move as many vehicles as they can to a particular space. That's their, that's what that's their charter. So. Yeah, that's their thing, you know. So, um, so it would make sense to them, John, is that what uh, I could, well, the thing with the tunnel, to my mind, the tunnel always has a safety uh, aspect to it. If I go through a tunnel at night, am I safe going through that tunnel? Am I safe going through during the day? You know, uh, I've known other communities that put it in tunnels and they're not safe uh, because of people who linger in them and whatever. I think also the, the bicycle question, there's, you know, the pedestrian bicycle, and also, you know, it's under grade, so now you got to worry about water management, you know, tunnel floods, lighting, uh, ventilation, all those good things. It's a being expensive project. The alternative, obviously, is a, a pedestrian overcrossing. But anymore to do that, you have to be a compliant person that doesn't have to have Yeah, they right couldn't now. get up the... Uh, Unless you have enough, enough, <laughs> enough area for a gradual slope, uh, yeah, yeah you've got you to provide elevators. So, that's a problem. How do you solve that? Will it be a, you know, obviously when that project, if it becomes real, we'll ask. Um, you know, a lot of people, you know, it's a question people need to have an answer for. So, but any more on that? Okay, I didn't see more. Right now, and so it's light commercial, industrial. Is there a reason why we would like to put more commercial in there? Well, the, the, as we've heard, is that you know it's a different environment, different economy now. Is that there's not a lot of manufacturing, either you know, or industrial. They're having a challenge in the business park. And we've heard from them that you know at the rate that they've done since 1985 or 88, that business park wouldn't have been built. It won't be built built off for another hundred years. Just that the adoption rate was moving for because there's no interest. And part of that is California's an expensive place to do business, and that was set up as sort of an R and D. Environment and this is very similar, but yeah, that's a fair question. What is the market for that right now? Well, it's strange. I mean, that conflicts a lot with what we're doing with like buzzos and a lot of the different companies. Yeah, it's, it's a different forecast, I guess. Industrial commercial is, is the hottest thing. Um, but the also part of that, too, is this county. You know, I shouldn't say it. You have PGE, <coughs> and those rates are, you know, compared to SMUD. Very true. Um, and then just the um, the, you know, other counties, other jurisdictions do different things to entice those those uses, and the, our county basically doesn't have the dollars to do it. Or you know, I know we're working on a program to see that other things, but I, I think that would be one thing that I raised is as they're drafting, is there's a possible way to say the age restriction doesn't work out, maybe if the need for housing, if it could have changed, that we could convert it somewhat to. So, so let me clarify, they've done their market studies and they think it's going to move quickly like their assisted living is. So I think they're pretty, probably pretty good to marketing. The concern that some people have is what happens in 20, 25, 30 years when the age of the baby boomer age population is not the pile of residents, what happens, right? <laughs> that means and, they're going to be dead? No, I didn't say that. <laughs> I didn't say that. I said, well, you turn express what happens, and there's a lot of things like redevelopment and other things that happen with those 
kind of facilities, that the state starts bringing back some of that money, we'll see things like affordable housing at some point in time, maybe. But so I'm not worried about what's going to happen in 20, 25 years, because it's all going to be different. <laughs> Well, that's my generation. I mean, yeah. Well, then you're going to You'll have that choice, whether you're not. But it's a fair question. A lot of people, I know, in the community have made comments. I think, uh, uh, you know, even when they talk about doing the self storage project, which we really didn't thoroughly review because we had heard from the county from planning that basically, you know, <laughs> it was going to happen. It was perceived as an approved use. But when you got to the details of it, really, you know, the, the plan development, it's, the self-storage is really not industrial. It's, it's a commercial enterprise, but it's um, industrial, they approved it, so there you go. But it is a reuse of a building that has not been used, and they couldn't find any way to go into it. And I think that's been the challenge, and why Oakmont, they were very excited when they did that one project, and I went to the, the opening. It's a fabulous location. I mean, they've done a lot of good work there, and they seem to be sold out pretty quickly. So they're excited about being here and they're excited about making an investment here because they see that, you know, there's a lot of seniors coming here. But they buy, they buy a house for six, seven hundred thousand dollars in one of the, the age restricted communities and then maybe 20 years in, when they're in their 70s, you know, maybe they want something different and they need or they have different needs. So, and, and, and you know, I've, years I've seen, I've seen the, uh, the plans on this. And uh, well, the conceptual plans, right? Yeah, all of <laughs> all of the all of the two-story housing is you really can't see it from the from the neighbor's it's property. Uh, you can maybe see the rooftops, and then the three-story are further. Uh, and yeah, I think they said that their conceptual for the three-story was actually lower than most of the building heights for the. Yeah, for they'll, the they'll be at the bottom of that slope yeah. that comes down. So they did have sight lines, some um, conceptual sight lines from. Stonebriar looking out across the property, they're drawings. So how, uh, you know, if you're an artist, you can make something work, I guess, but um, they are looking at things like that, cause, and they've walked the community in Stonebriar, and they've asked those questions, and I know that there were uh, at least one resident from Stonebriar, or, or the neighborhood there, sorry, that they were at the board hearing, and they said, you know, out of all the things that have been suggested over here, this is the one, you know, we find more acceptable. So, and that might just be a handful, but they were right up against the property line. So, great assault, right? I work with, I, I know someone, I, work with, I know someone, she lives, she and her family live right there. They will overlook it. Uh, we were working together at the farmer's market this last weekend, and she said that all the uses, uh, they like this one, they like the fact that it's over 55, because they know you're not going to have a bunch of 20 or 25 year olds partying, you know, Friday, yeah. Saturday night. I see this party. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a bit, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just more efficient, you know, yeah. just get it done. And she likes the fact that they're <laughs> keeping the industrial, uh, the 60 foot setback, as yeah. opposed to the 15 or They're already, foot. it's already there. Yeah. So that thing's a big thing. And she said from her backyard, uh, based on the sight lines she's seen, she can look straight out and not see the development yeah. at all. Except for that. And the yeah, that's for it. That's for it. Well, the other thing that I found intriguing was the, uh, the hotel conference center, which is something, you know, CSU's generous with us to use this building, um, but it's another option for other groups you know, to have big meetings, um, to have to get people to come in, to stay at the hotel at, uh, you know, that just sold for twenty some million dollars at the town center, and yeah, there are other hotels proposed around it. So it's a you know it's a potential draw for the community. This would be the third proposed hotel. Uh, and the town center. The hotel actually is by right though, they can build that right yeah, now. With the, but the third proposed to be built. Yeah, so and I haven't heard anything else about being long. They're pulling permits. Are they? Yep. And that's all they have to do. So it's already so. In Ontario, they are all that still is conceptual at this point. No, that's gotta go through a more formal review. Well the, we've heard that the, the the draft is coming, right? The Wait, draft, yeah. yeah. Also yeah. probably in the center. So the Montana door was at least two years away, but yeah. the ILOC could be skilled and running probably here. I get emails constantly from some hotel broker that's looking to buy hotels, ask me, oh, where's that project at? Yeah, I don't know, it's, uh, it's on paper still. But, um, so yeah, a lot of hotel uses. Um, so, yeah, but it's nice because you're talking about a hotel conference center, it's not just uh, you know, 
the Holiday Inn, we, the Holiday Inn we have in Elmer Hills is a very nice hotel. And you think Holiday Inn, you know, you know, Holiday Inn, but it's actually, and it's pretty nice because they just sold it for a lot of money. So, um, which, we're going to do this right now. Um, Central Hills <coughs> specific plan. As Tim talked about earlier, um, we've had some previews of what's suggested and what might be coming back. We haven't seen the final environmental impact report on this, um, but I'll we'll start describing it and then we'll talk about the timelines that we've been hearing. So, the old golf course, which stretches right down here, and the fire stations right here, um, and then Strong Parkway up along. <coughs> it needs to be bigger for my eyes. Uh, Railings is down here. So, this is, you know, in 2014, 15, 16, we were talking about 250 acre pro uh, project with 1,000 uh, residential units, uh, 50,000 square feet of commercial. Uh, roughly 85 uh, acres of open space and 15 acres of recreational park, which I believe we're talking about down here in the corner on the old golf course by the, by the highway. Um, it's a, it includes an amendment to the Elmer Hill specific plan because they're taking part of the Serrano project that's in that specific plan and swapping land in. Right? Is that a fair, a, yeah. a high level view? So moving out of one specific plan into a new specific plan. Um, so the, the draft environmental impact report came out and it was recirculated. It's a huge document. I know that Tim did a lot of work on it back in yesteryear, in 2016. Uh, those final, uh, final comments for that draft environmental impact report were due in August, and since then we've heard nothing. We haven't seen, and as, as uh, I think we talked about before, you know, impacts the volunteer group, and at the time, the people working on it, you know, there are different people, and some of those people aren't here, sadly, some of them passed away. Those documents were held by individuals. I, I haven't even seen, other than that one that was submitted in February, what APAC's comments were on the draft environmental impact report. We suspect that that was the only one that was submitted. I, I suspect there was another group called Parks Not Parker yeah, I know that, that yeah, really yeah. kind of took uh, a lead on analyzing the project yeah. from the, for the Outdoor Hills community, and because some members of APAC we're on both you know, yeah. I think we decided that, you know, the concerns that were being expressed it was by, by the Parks and Parker group pretty much mirrored the concerns that APAC would have raised as well. So, um, and I think I've got the letter that APAC submitted referencing the sure. application forward to. Oh, that'd be great. I just got to go and dig it out of this. You're file. not doing it tonight. Dig the file out of the, the uh, folder. Okay. I'll do that. So, so basically, this is three years ago, and as Tim was saying, yeah, this is coming back now. It's a huge document. We're going to have a few weeks to look at it, but to, to you know, responsibly and thoroughly review it and talk about it takes time. It's a big document, so we're going to be looking to break this up. Got it. You know, we were at a meeting recently yeah. with Parker, and the devil is in the details. Yeah, I have <laughs> There's an awful lot of things in here. Well, I think we've been reading them. Um, yeah. I think we've been, yeah. So, we have a preview look at, um, we'll talk about this as we get into it. It's, it's, Unique this time um, in terms of the development agreement being available at the time that the project is being considered, as opposed to a development agreement, agreement happening in the shadows and then it's presented as you know, you know Moses coming out with the tablets, right? And here, here they are. But um, we'll get through the description of it. So haven't heard anything about it since officially since 2016. There's been a lot of talk about it. Um, Oops, I went too far. So what's been suggested, but it's not official because it's not submitted, we have it's not released to the public. A reduction in the number of residential homes. Uh, there are numbers floating around until we see it, we don't know for sure. Uh, two park spaces, one would be internal, I think like inside the the surrounding neighborhoods where they're internal for the neighborhood that they're behind the gate. And then a, a park space, uh, space down here still at the bottom and I think it's still 15 acres. 15 so, acres. Thank you. So, and I think they're talking about a turnkey park or they're for different CSD Phillips so to, to build some what they want, but they're looking to, to do that. And they have. Um, they're not talking turnkey, they're talking dedication of land with commitments of the CFD funds that are set up to actually okay. go over park. So. Did we talk about turnkey? Mm -hmm. It's it, 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 gone back and forth too yeah. many times. I yeah. mean, sometimes, and again, I think the CSD years, so I don't want to misstate myself, 
Sometimes the developer would like to be turnkey to get, to get it done. Sometimes CSD would, I think, prefer to get the land, the funding, so they can build it. Because it's going to be their part. It's going to be their part and a better sense of what the community needs in the development. And that's fair. Um, so as part of this, um, they're going to be, uh, I can't remember the acres, it'll let me What's the community government by commercial? A lot of acres. Thank you. And that's up here on the other side by the building and the fire station. Um, it's on the hillside. So there are a lot of, I know that many January comes several years ago in 2016, <coughs> Center for the Ages, um, but that project would have to find money to get built, but they're willing to provide us the, the land. And there's some other you know, mechanisms with it, but just at a high level right now, do we have it out in public? It's kind of what has been suggested. The country club, some, can't talk about it. The country club drive extension would be phased. And basically, um, we're, uh, the driveway to Rayleigh's across from that's Park Drive. That's an actual road name. That would become a road that would go behind Rayleigh's across the old off golf course property back here. Let's see, Rayleigh's right here. So this road right here, and it would basically be a kind of frontage road, a parallel um, capacity road for the highway on the north side of 50 as opposed to White Rock, which is on the south. And it would run in phase, and right now the CIP is four phases, of Ron Hills to Silver Valley, Silver Valley to Tong, and Tong to Bass Lake Road, and right now they're building the Country Club realignment, past Holy Trinity Catholic Church for the Bass Lake Hills Pacific Bank. So those are a lot of moving pieces. All those things were identified in the CIP, it's a 20 year document, so they're, parts of it are 20 years out, and you know, those, that's a moving target. Is it real, is it not real? Where does the money really come from? Our dollars that are projected now out of it for what happens in 20 years, but they're not. So, um, but the country club, they've talked about uh, providing, uh, you know, basically the easement, the land to build a country club extension through their project and then a little bit further past that for Ron Court Silver Valley. Um, so, uh, it would be a phased project based off of triggers and uh, the building permits and different number of lots being done. Um, on different parts of their of their plan area. Um, so it's basically two sections of country club. You know, the county's eager to get done, but they're proposing to provide it as an enticement. Hey, we're willing to do this. We want to get our project done. So, um, and then they talk about some various funding mechanisms that are a little unique to uh, provide additional funding to the county in terms of transportation and for open space apartment. But until it's a document that we can put our hands on, you know, not fair to really talk about it now. So, um, and then we were told that the documents, uh, I was at the meeting the other day, it will be the next one. The documents are scheduled to be available on October 14th, and as Tim saw in the uh, planning commission, that, uh, I, I could have gone back with Mal. Yeah, we're going to see these documents because, you know, if I'm going to read 6,800 pages, I kind of get, plan my week a little bit. Uh, weeks. Yes. Yeah. So, and um, what's different with this is that, um, this, is that there is sort of a draft development agreement that's going to be public. I mean, we've seen parts of it, or we've seen a, a conceptual. I've been told, but I thought that by that it was going to be, the development agreement is going to kind of be concurrent with the approvals process. So you can see what the developer is promising to the county, what the county is promising to the developer. That's not something, you know, in, in the past, we didn't really ever see that. So but these are all documents that we talked about. You know, it was a big document three years ago. It's just as big a document now. The devil is in the details. You can look at the final EIR, but until you see it and see the responses to the concerns that were presented in 2016, and you know, the question I think we'll have as a group is, are those concerns, you know, are they fundamentally different now in 2019 and 2020 than they were in 2016? Are there things we missed? Are there things that were covered that seem adequate or don't seem adequate? I, I think the, you know, when you look at these environmental documents, the two or three things that typically drive the community are, one, what are the traffic impacts? Because this is going to be a major project. It's going to affect El Dorado Hill Boulevard, because that's going to be the major entrance, if you would. Uh, and how is that going to play with morning traffic, afternoon traffic, construction traffic, trucks going in and out? You know how they make those big wide turns and block three or four lanes at a time when they have two of those loads of dirt to move. Uh, traffic is one. Usually noise is a second one. 
construction noise, dust what's the noise to be in effect after the place is built out. The third is the air quality thing. You know, natural occurring asbestos that is just naturally occurring in the land. Are they, how are they going to keep that down, damper it down? Are they going to conform to the county requirements about air dust and mitigation? They all say that they do, but the county only has, I think, two or three air quality inspectors. They don't, they're not on site, you know, all their construction hours. It's dependent on residents like us. Hey, I went through by an hour and I saw this huge plume, plume of dust, you know, is that contain natural occurring asbestos? And, and then the, the, if the, you know, the inspectors come out and look, well, you know, it's hours later and, or maybe a day later, yeah. the dust's not there, are they watering up? All those questions, but it also puts the community in sort of an adversarial relationship with the development in that now we're doing the monitoring. Um, well, having a little next to Sarasota Estates, I can promise you, even when they try to take the measures to keep the dust out, Layer dust every day, oh, yeah. but they're blasting too, mm -hmm. so they're going into the natural occurring asbestos. Do you get notices on the blasting? It's close to we, we get one notice, but it, they start at five in the morning and it rattles the house bad, and like it's that bad. And we are we're we're a good like, a thousand yards away, and, and then they were they were breaking down the boulders. Uh, right up there on the top. They uh, crushed on site. Yeah, they <laughs> crushed them on site. Huge amounts of dust. They get one notice on the blasting for a window of time where they say during these next four months. Yeah. We'll be blasting on a regular basis. But at 5 a.m. Yeah. are just blasting at 5 a.m. Oh, yeah. The several right. trucks coming in at 5 in the morning. Some of the conditions that don't allow us. So we I thought it was 6 or 7 for the real. I know when they were blasting at Tom Fuge, so a lot of people here at my shack, <laughs> and that was like seven in the morning. Yeah, yeah seven. I think that that's supposed to start before seven. Right. Well, just to give you an idea of when the explosion occurred in our neighborhood and for that home that blew up, yeah. unfortunately, everybody figured that was them blasting. Because it's right. so routine for us to have our house shake so dramatically. You know, I think to you know, get back to this, my perception is, I don't care what you think about market development and how they do things, but they do make the quality products. A lot of people live in Serrano because it is well developed, it is well maintained, uh, and that, that's fine, that's a choice you make. Um, it is a big ask to the community because this is not just, oh, uh, another development, that's zoned for the right thing. They are requesting a general plan amendment so that the county has the overall general plan. They are asking for a general plan amendment so they can build this project out. They are asking for two specific plan amendments, an uh, amendment to the Central El Dorado Hills specific plan and an amendment to the El Dorado Hills specific, specific plan. They are asking for a rezoning because it's currently zoned uh, parks or open, open space, space, open space, space recreational, and so they want to, you know, change that to residential. Um, they're doing it the right way. They are. They have the right to request all those things. They spend a significant amount of time on studies and everything else. So they are following the exact process that they are required to do and that they should do. Now they're coming back and asking for the planning commissioners to approve it and ultimately the board of supervisors to approve it. The question is, what are they going to be offering the community of Colorado Hills, uh, which will bear the brunt of the impact of construction, traffic, noise, and everything else, and is what they are offering that, you know, a 15 acre park and some other amenities, which we'll get more details on in the next couple of weeks, I guess, is that sufficient to overcome the overwhelming 91% vote, an opinion vote, not a, not binding. Just would you like to keep it open space? Or would you like to see it uh, not open space? 91% of the 4,000 people voted down on the hill said keep it open space. Well, we don't own that pro property; they own it, and it's a question of what is there enough that they can give back to the community that the community would welcome the development. I don't want to go on forever, no, no, that's but that's fair. pretty much summarizes it up. And man. I think that was sort of the sentiment from the entire process, from what it was proposed in 2012 and 
14, 15, 16, yeah. is that you know a lot of people have objected to, you know, I remember coming here in the in the seventies as a kid, and you know the golf course being right there, being the thing you saw when you came to the photo. So you know it doesn't look like that anymore. But is this a use? Um, as, as Steve was saying, you know, is, is, is there enough trade, is there enough benefit to the community, the community feels like, well, that's, you know, that's adequate, or I have other concerns. I, I was going to say, Tim, please keep in mind that the fact that they're asking for all of these zoning changes is not being done out of the goodness of their heart. They have to do this in order to use that land. Oh, I know okay? that. Okay. And, and there are, and I remember, I think, uh, when they took the last survey and what the community wanted to do with that golf course, uh, the CSD actually asked if they, uh, if people would would want to uh, pony up some money, uh, possibly a bond, uh, to buy that land and to keep it recreational. And that might be something in the future. Um, the other thing that I that concerns me, I know that they've offered the county uh, some of the land along El Dorado Hills Boulevard. Eleven acres. Yeah. Okay. Now, the thing is, there's a kicker in there. If the county doesn't take that land and use it or propose something for that land, and they never told us what the time span was, it goes back, it reverts back to them to do whatever they want with that land. There's two I'm options. Saying, the county has it, and also the CSD has an option as well. Right. So and either the county or the CSD. And, but the thing is, they, they never really explained how long that time span was when it had to be used. I right. took it, it five or ten. They say five years, because I didn't hear five years. He's five years to exercise the option. Yes. Yeah. It is well, five years. I believe it's five years. Word. I, it's I, I didn't it's see that. It wasn't it's either five or ten years. But I think it was five. I understand, but okay. I read it by ten sticks up my mind when I read it. I just looked at the end of the day. So, um, so we were told the, the documents would be available on the fourteenth, which would give us enough lead time. We were thinking, you know, we would probably have to have another APAC meeting before, because they're going to be a planning commission in November, and it's the day after our meeting. And you know, that's not fair for us as volunteers to look at it, try to have it ready for them before their meeting, and it's not really fair to the applicant either that we're throwing out our response the night before they have a meeting at 8.30 in the morning. So uh, it's, I, I imagine, if we're not seeing the documents in the, in the next week, I don't know that it's feasible, we'll be doing an extra meeting if we can get the space. The only thing I think, John, is instead of, if we can move our meeting up the week before, I think it's November 13th is the next one. November 13th to do it if we, can, if we can move it a week earlier, if we get the documents by the 25th, that would give us two weeks to. Right. I think when we look at it, I, I need your help. You know, yeah, Joel is gone, but or, no, maybe right. he's still here. But I know Joel's going to help us with it. If you know, you guys come to these meetings, so I know you're interested. We really can use your help. It can't. It can't just be three or four people going and looking at these things. It's, it's yeah. not fair, quite frankly, to us. And uh, I suspect once this gets more noticed. You know, the next meeting, I suspect this room to be standing room only, quite frankly, because this is a major project that's going to change uh, El Dorado Hills uh, well, irreversibly. And there's two thoughts on that, too. Uh, three years ago, definitely would fill the room. Talk about it's a little different now, perception's a little different now. So, and that's part of the equation. Is this, for the community, is this an adequate proposal for what's, you know, for the entitlements they're asking for? So uh, we've been told to have their first planning commission, they're going to break it into two hearings. Yeah. First planning commission hearing is Thursday the 14th in Blackwell, so uh, and the second would be Thursday, December 12th. So um, you know, we had hoped that we would have enough time to look at the documents to get something to it before the 14th, that we have to do an extra meeting. Now it's not like the documents will have to be ready for another week, so we probably don't have enough time. So we'll discuss internally, and then we'll email everybody on the list if we are able to move the meeting out. Um, and then if there's any additional follow-up with that we can do between that November meeting and the a month later in December, we'll entertain any help that anybody wants to provide. I have to check out, but I have more. Okay, awesome. Night, So um, it really will be uh, a lot. It's, it's a big lift, but it's made easier if a lot of people read. It, and it's reading, and it's, it's hard reading, but I don't know. Uh, John, I'm going to respond here, Jeff. Can we make some comments? I think she was first with comments, and then I'd like to make some comments about sure. that. Sure. No, I'm, I'm, 
Serrano has land use committee, and I'm sure uh, if you talk to the committee chair, you might be able to get some people to help you because we're interested in what's going to happen to that land. Right. So well, so well, I have that man's number. I, I, I was going to say, <clears throat> if I remember from the last meeting, they said they didn't want to make the plans public before the 14th. But it was open that we could see the plans uh, prior to the 14th. Okay. You, do you remember that? They, they didn't want to make it public, but they, they said they really couldn't stop us from seeing it before the 14th if they gave it to us. Well, I, they can always give us documents if they choose to, but again, it's the county who is generating the documents, not Parker. Well, and we want to see what they want to plan. As I said before, we've, we've received a lot of hearsay on this. Okay, a lot of areas are, are nebulous. Uh, so, you know, we could ask them to see actually what they want to do in writing. Uh, well, prior, to, to, prior to the 14th. That's where my concern is that until it's an official document that's submitted to the county, they can show us prior to the 14th and it'd be a different document. Like, there are a few changes. Uh, you know, I don't want to miss anything. Would they be that? Uh, but it was, it's been rather dynamic for the last year. It's a county that's generating the documents. They are the official holder of the environmental impact report. They generate it. They are responding to the all the comments that were made in the draft environmental impact report. So when the county's ready to generate it, they, the email I got said it's for clerical processing. You know, again, if it's 800 pages, 1,000 pages, they have to make 80 copies of it. They have to get it ready to be posted online and make sure they get everything lined up. That can take a while. But, um, you know, Parker's will can share anything that they choose to share with APAC or anyone else. But they probably, like John said, they want to get, make yeah. sure it's a final document so you don't have drafts of different things. And people yeah, well, different you don't want to be having conversations about something that isn't going to happen versus something that's changed and it's, you know, different now. Um, to be, I, and as Tim was talking about earlier, they've been very generous with their time and uh, in, in providing peaks to us. But until it's a real document submitted to the county and we see the final, oh, we've been generous with our time too. As no, Rex said, I wasn't yeah, going to say that. Gavel's, gavel's in the details, and yes. the details are yes. in the written documents that we get to observe. So but, until I see things like that, I take it, you know, I'll listen to anyone, give them all the time I want to present something. But until I see something in writing where I can actually think about it and it's, this is what's going to happen, then you can respond intelligently. So, um, possibly we'll move the meeting up and not have an extra meeting. Um, that's okay with me. We just need to find the space. Do it earlier in November then. Um, There's no point in scheduling something until we have documents. That's what I mean. Have so, to look at. Um, so, with that, I mean, that's really all we um, Okay, so we talked about. We need to review it. Uh, we have a, a preview of the development agreement, and again, I just want to clarify that really will be released publicly. I thought the intention was that would, which is a, a new dynamic we have to do about. We have to review the final, uh, review the development agreement, we bring up the sections and everything. We thought about maybe we might have to schedule an extra meeting. Maybe we won't just move another one up. And then we'll have to respond with either subcommittee findings or, or a, a formal vote. I would prefer a formal vote. Uh, but on the timing, it, it might end up being such a meeting for the first meeting and uh, being a formal for the second meeting. So we'll have to wait and see. It may, may not even be a sub meeting, maybe it's maybe the whole and we'll have to chime in. If we get enough participation, and it's hard, we did the vineyards, uh, and uh, we did the vineyards project, and I think it was three or four of us really worked on it, and, um, and that was a much smaller project, even with three or four people. It was a struggle to get it in and compress time, and they were generous enough to give us. You know, a lot of extra time on the environmental impact report. So, uh, if anybody's interested, I'll want to. Yeah, I, I, I'm hoping to make some comments on this because I think there's, um, first of all, you're talking about a project that the EIR, the technical studies, are four years old. They were done during the drought. Conditions have tremendously changed in terms of weapons, especially in the Pedregal Park. Yeah, first of all, I don't even understand why they were combined in the first place, other than that the ownership was the same, and it was more convenient probably for hiding issues by making it this massive plan of 800 pages. So now you've got the technical reports that were done years ago. The last public comment was three and a half years ago on the draft of the environmental. Those people, 
there's different neighbors, there's different people that weren't allowed to comment, it was never circulated properly back then. We've got a whole lot of problems with this project, and to allow it to proceed now in this rush process that's driven by Parker is 100% wrong, and I hate to see this group go along with it and be driven into this when we've never even seen a drawing of what's going to be done there. I mean, you know, lotting, uh, when's it going to happen, scheduling, all that stuff is important to know. And I think, again, you're mixing apples and oranges here. They're two different environments on the different slopes. They shouldn't be together. Each should be a separate project and considered separately. And I think this is really wrong what's been allowed to happen so far. And there's a whole lot of other things. I mean, there's different wildlife species that have repopulated the area after the drought. And the other part is that they will need a core permit for um, crossing all those wetlands that are developed there. And the core is not going to accept three and a half year old um, or four year old technical studies. So new technical studies will be done. So you can close the EIR process and then new environmental studies will be coming in. You should wait until the environmental studies are all redone for the core. I mean, so I think everybody's jumping through the hoops uh, of Mr. Parker and his associates. And instead of that, wait for the information to come in. Don't just jump ahead with it. And I, I find this really disturbing if this is how projects get approved up here. I haven't come to these meetings before, and now I'm really uh, amazed that this is what's happening up here. And I really feel passionately that this should not be happening this way. Uh, I'll turn it over. Okay, APAC has a very sponsor group. We advise, and we provide advisory comments from the public and that's all we do. We have no land use authority. We don't have permit it. And the reason I think, and it looks like we're jumping for groups, is because we have an opportunity to respond. I mean, we'll ask for more time. If we, if we think we need more time, we'll ask for it. It doesn't mean we'll get it. And typically, we might get a couple weeks. Uh, and, and they'll comply with CEPA. How's that? Is that fair? Um, I, I believe that, um, and you know, that's a concern for me too, is that it was so many years ago, you know, things have changed. Now, I know that they'll say that a lot of the existing conditions that they did their studies are baked in with what they do from the past and what's been, you know. It's, cha it's changed, and, and the, other, the other part is, I mean, I had to go to the library to find the binder with no public comments in it, but the binder. It's covered in dirt. No one's looked at it for years. It's hidden underneath at the library. So this is not something people are understanding now. And by calling it Central Colorado Hills or whatever, People don't understand it's the old golf course project. I don't think people really get it. I don't think this, I think you'd have a pack here tonight if people understood what we were talking about. I don't, I don't disagree with anything you're saying. I, they, they will comply with CEPA. CEPA requires a minimum 45 day review of a draft environmental impact report. There is absolutely no CEPA requirement that any comment period be allowed for a final. You know, I think that's what the law says. I think that's stupid because, and as you said, given the three and a half years that passed, we all have to sort of reinvent what we knew. I mean, I made, I think, 30 pages of comments on uh, air quality stuff. I don't know anything about air quality before I started digging into this. I mean, you know, I kind of, does it smell good or not? But, you know, when you're throwing science tips, stuff like this, not a scientist, all I can say is this doesn't make sense to me. Same thing with the traffic study. We don't have, you know, APAC doesn't have traffic experts, you know, someone has background experience, they can make the comments, but we are a bunch of uh, civilians going against professional traffic study, environmental people who are paid a lot of monies to generate these things. We're looking at it as uh, 50,000 of you and making the best comments that we can. Well, and can, you, can you ask about whether they're doing additional work for federal review and ask it that this be held up? I believe what I heard and they were waiting on the Army Corps stuff to come back, and I think is the trigger for when they're coming now. I think they have those documents. They're, they're waiting for one yeah, of the things I wrote. I, I tell you, one of the things I wrote, I wrote directly to the Army Corps of Engineers saying that, you know, you guys get it approved. This is those little marshlands and those little streams are navigable waters of the United States. That's why the Army Corps of Engineers gets involved. Uh, they're, they're not navigable waters, but they're waters of the Well, they're waters, okay. And uh, that's they're why they're involved. Especially and the I, apartments down there are right on top of, of springs. Yeah. The, whole hill, the whole hill is a series of springs. So if they put a road across, they're, they're hitting uh, wetlands 
that the Corps should be very involved in permitting. And the Corps is working on old reports from the drought. The springs weren't as active then. They've been reactivated now that we have rain. And so hopefully everybody's requiring new information. The, I know that the planning department and the planning, I think the planning department does require updated reports. Some reports can be good for two, three, or four years, depending on what it, it, the report is. Like, I believe the cultural affairs reports are good for five years because if they've done a study and they found uh, graveyards or Indian. No, 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 no. Let me tell you, I work in the cultural field and okay. I'll, just, I'll fess up now. At one point, the planning department was using a 29 year old report that my company had done. So don't, you know, they aren't so perfect, letter perfect. They're supposed don't to be. Renew, they don't renew them. And I have reports that I did years and years ago that they just throw in there and call it good. You see, then that's why we need someone like you to take a look at some of these things and, and say, update, you know, this requires an update. They should not be relying on a five or seven or any 29 year old. Oh, okay, yeah. But, but again, planning, planning needs more I, guidance. I will add into that we need exactly. So, <laughs> so when we say we need people, I, I'm pointing at you. I don't mean it in malice or anything, but I'm waiting for you to do something. Well, yes, my comment is, you know who I am. I'm the one that says the only project is the no project. The no project. The no non-support. But Melinda's correct. The environmental impact report that comes back will not address the questions we already put on the record. And, uh, well, I said before, I'm ready to sue. I know Tim doesn't like to hear the word, but we're attorneys, so that's the way we operate. But mm -hmm. the Parker, if he would have just spent the money, uh, donated that to the CSD, and let them have the money that he spent trying to make money off of that project, and leave it in open space, because it's zoned open space, and with all due respect, folks, as long as I'm here, I don't want to be in here. Hope I won't get hit by that guy that witness for that woman back in Texas, someone shot him. I might get shot, who knows? But as long as I can see it out my front door, it ain't going to get the dollars. Well, I know that you worked hard on it in the past, and we'll be looking to leverage that. Uh, Call again, we hope. Uh, the other part of this that we talked about is that those comments went in for years ago, and you know, we can't see them anymore. Uh, they were, uh, I can't see the, the draft of our Millennium Report's comments. Okay, well, all right. They're in my garage, actually. Well, oh, but I mean, if, they're if not you know, I would like to just email you the, our comments that we sent on the draft you have. If you have a mail. Oh, yes. Give me if, it, if it's easy, beautiful. Me but that's the thing is that you know, it was long years in the past. It was different groups. And it was APAC. And um, in, in any concerns you have that perhaps, you know, we're missing something. Tim said, we're not experts. If there's something we're missing, bring it up to us. And if we don't, and we probably won't have the answer. But you also can make those comments on your own as but we would fold them in if there's something that we don't have an answer for and you want to be part of the subcommittee, let's put the questions in, let's just, you know, we want to include as much as we can and we don't want to, um, to miss something, uh, which is, in a document this big, it's hard to do. I mean, it's easy to do, sorry. It's hard Actually, to talk about. the PDF, it's really easy to search. All right. Did you? Is there any more on this? Um, we're looking, we'll probably send a supplemental email if we do do an early meeting. But we'll probably send a supplemental email if we have the documents and ask for volunteers. If you're ready to volunteer to help out with that now, your name's on our check-in list with an email address, I can read. Put an X next to your name when you leave so that I know that we can, you know, point in the email you, but we can uh, ask you if you're still willing to help. So, is there anything else on this? Try something. You should have the February 9, 2016 letter of the APEX. I do have that one. Yeah. I do have that one. So, um, right now our next meeting is November 13th back here in this building at 7 p.m. <laughs> Hopefully the power will be on. And uh, thank you everybody for coming out on sort of an odd night and uh, for sticking with us. We got a little earlier we thought. Help for it. We're adjourned. That's it for a minute. Just in time because my leg is killing me. <laughs>